It is time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament where we are going to be playing a very uh, appropriate game for the English leg and that is Pen Pendragon. Appropriate because it takes place in England um, or the British Isles, uh, British Island long time ago back in the 4th and 5th centuries um, along with Dancing Bear, Hair Bear, Pegasus and Junior. Um, Junior is going to be playing the Dukes. They are they are like the Roman control over the area, and they're kind of interesting in this game. They play a lot like uh, a counterinsurgent faction, like the U.S. or the Coalition in some previous games, um, Batista, Cuba Libre, um, except that that can change. So we have this Imperium track here, and this kind of represents the broader like political state, especially vis-a-vis um, -vis, uh, Junior and Dancing Bear here. Um, as that changes, the, those two's victory conditions are actually going to change. So it starts off, um, Junior is gonna want a lot of uh, prosperity, which is these golden cubes in here. They're, Roughly analogous to support, but not quite. Um, and personal prestige for, you know, Rome and Rome's arm there. Now, it can can come to pass that this marker gets down here, in which case um, Roman control is totally fragmented. There's no, like, there's no uh, overarching government control. And then they play just like kind of like any of the other barbarian factions. They just want control and also prestige as well. Okay, so that that's very unique in my my experience with the coin games that uh, you're you're you kind of like you have a a different sense of time, I guess, in that your your own your goals can actually change based on what the overarching position is. Um, Dancing Bear, she's going to be playing these blue cubes here. Um, they're kind of kind of similar to the Afghan government. In a way, they they don't really care about the prosperity, but they do want control and they want personal wealth. So they're they're kind of like the the landed noble people and whatnot who live here, um, not not directly tied to Rome, except that they are working with the dukes. Um, then we have two barbarian factions. We have uh, Hair Bear Saxons here, and Pegasus is Scotty. They don't even start on the map at all, but they're gonna be invading, and they're kind of the closest thing to um, insurgents that the game has, um, but they, they operate through, via different mechanisms, but kind of have a similar feel in some ways. They both want, um, some degree of map presence, basically. That's that's put in different terms, and then they have um, renown, which is also important for them. They don't they don't spend money. They don't have resources. They have renown. So there's not going to be any like transfer of wealth uh, between these people, so much um, except some perhaps between the dukes and the siwitates here. Um, since we do have some. Uh, Let's see, Junior and Pegasus both uh, went to school and had some business experience from careers. They are going to start off the game with some capabilities. So Pegasus, she uh, has biology, so she gets highborn Britain hostage. So she can, like, tell who's the best, <laughs> the best blood to, to, to steal when she, does, when she does ransoming, when she does kidnapping. Um, let's see, Junior here... Yeah, he gets his sports let him. Um, well, I, I, if you don't know the game, you're not gonna know what that does. He also, because he has business experience, I guess that translates to boatsmanship. That was the closest thing I could find. Um, oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. Yeah, okay. So this, sorry, I I was looking through the the camera. Thing and I couldn't really read what I was looking at. So this one is the business one, Mariners by the Sea. So his his people can move from one sea location to another uh, just anytime he does certain operations. And then he has a battle ability that he gets for his sports. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'll kind of talk about what's happening as we play, like I do. And we're going to have a great time. Let's go. 
All right, Junior's gonna be up first on Swift Chargers. This is our first card of the game. Um, this is gonna put him in an interesting position because he is going to either pass so that he can react to what happens, what uh, probably Hair Bear is gonna do, or he can try to play some defense. Now, how the um, insurgent factions, which are comparable to the barbarians in this, in the other coin games goes, you have the little cylinders upside down. You can see where they are, but you, you, you don't know specifically within that region where they are unless you sweep them up, right? Um, in this case, the, these folks here, these little triangles, they're not cylinders, they're raiders, and they're not gorillas, they're raiders. Um, they come in and off the map because they're they're basically like raiding from the ocean or if you have a stronghold they're raiding from the stronghold so you it's really hard to know where they're going to strike now hair bears faction here the saxons they can right now they can strike anywhere adjacent to these oceans or they could do a deep raid and go one further so if junior's trying to defend against that he's pretty much got to think about protecting all clear to here. Yeah, that's not adjacent. So yeah, clear to here. Just kind of this arc here. And that's really tricky to do, especially since um, he doesn't have a lot of units. He's got strong units. The Red Cavalry are powerful, but he doesn't have a lot. He's got a lot of ground to cover. And the militia here, the these light blue cubes, are pretty weak. So he's got a couple options. He can train up more militia. That's one thing he could do. He could also um, invite, which is kind of an interesting thing. What you do is you put down a barbarian settlement, which helps them towards their victory in general. But and, and if some of their cubes, their warbands, which are stronger than raiders and stronger than militia. Um, but then they'll work for you. So he could start doing that. The problem is you have to pay them every turn. And also um, they can turn on you. So it's probably not an ideal solution at this point. But he wants to think in terms of like how how he if it's possible to defend so we're going to have to discuss that think about it and come back to you it might be that the better option is just to wait to pass and then react that could be what he chooses to do okay so junior opted to do some marching uh to just be more defensive now he's also going to do this uh, special it's called a feat in this game it's a special activity called requisition he's going to take six one two three four five six from the britain resources right now both dancing bear and junior can share resources he can use her resources as his own but later on if things get fragmented that's not going to be the case so he's going to start building up his own coffers as well as kind of defend things he he opted to kind of focus on defending towns towns are if the, a deep raid can can take out a town pretty quick um, if they do a surprise attack the barbarians and that can that can cost a lot of um, prosperity, which is something he's trying to defend at this point. Can't didn't really have any great options to bump up his own prestige right now. Normally he does that through combat or by building towns, um, but there, it just didn't, it seemed like a better move to build up his coffers. So now it's going to be Hair Bear's turn. Hair Bear could take this uh, nice event here where he could raid, take some prosperity, and then escape right away, uh, but only in one space. And I think he would like to pass, which will give him a renown. Cheers, he passed. Um, and that'll bring it to Hair Bear, or, or Dancing Bear, sorry. It's gonna be hard for me having both of these cuddly bears. Um, She's going to come up with some limited command, and then we'll probably join you on the next card. All right, we're on the Anona card. That's not going to really, the events don't really matter right now. We don't have any Federati on the board, so no one's really going to concern themselves with that. Hairbear is going to concern himself with doing some raiding, though. Um, so here's what he's going to do. He is going to raid here in Durotrigis. Uh, I shouldn't say the names. There's a, I can't, I have no excuse 
with this game to, to mispronounce words because there is a pronunciation guide in the back, but I didn't think to look up these names before um, I started filming. So I'm just not going to say the names of the places. You can just see them. Um, and then it's going to go up here and right here. Now he's picking this place because he's going to do a surprise attack there and hopefully try to take out this town um, and get a bunch of stuff money and renown from that. These places, um, these are fens, and so he has a chance of being able to make way with the loot, even if they don't, um, even if they, even if they're, uh, they're allowed to intercept or try to attack him beforehand, because his raiders are good at evading a, a battle in fens. I said that with a lot of, a lot more words and time than I needed, but that's all right. So how this is going to work, so you pick those places and we'll, I guess, be official and mark that as a special activity right there. We're going to go ahead and roll 3d4 right there because he's going to pay money for each one. Two, three, four, five, six. He's putting a lot on the line here. Maybe could have just spent one on some of those, but it's almost not worth it. Four. That's really good. Six and eight. So we'll remember eight there. Actually, we'll just go ahead and do it because we won't remember, will we? Four, five, six, seven, eight. This is live action rating here, people. And then we'll go here in that place that I'm not going to try to pronounce without using the guide. Four again. Seven. Jeez. Eight. So, it averaged out to be the same. Shoot, 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 shoot. Gosh, is he going to have enough raiders for the next one? Here, I'm just going to remember eight for that one. I can remember because I have eight there. And I'll roll the other one. My left hand doesn't always work as well as I'd like. Three. Seven. That's good. This one, he wants to have a lot of people. <laughs> 11 that's almost as many as he could get now it's oh and I made a mistake here it's not actually going to be 8 because there are forts along this ocean that he is raiding from and this ocean is patrolled so for each fort along the ocean that kind of represents like boats out there they have boats out there that are stopping raiders from coming over so they didn't all make it 8 tried 5 succeeded same here we're going to have 5 there but down here, we're going to have 12 less 3, so we're going to have 9 down there. I'll get back with some battling. I think he's going to do some battling, try to take this town, unless I look at the charts and it doesn't make sense to do that. Sometimes that happens. Okay, so here's what's happening. These raiders have taken plunder up there. These raiders have taken plunder down here. Now they're going to... they. Uh, initiated a battle. That's something you can do when you raid. This militia guy, he was like, nope, I'm going to go in town. Um, now they have a chance to do a coup de main since it's a surprise attack where they just kind of flood through the town and they, the town has no, doesn't get to use its town defenses. So then they just do a one-on-one -on -one fight with the garrison there, which consists of two units and then this militia. So yeah, well, we'll see if the coup de main works. We need a four or less. And that's based on the town's capacity, uh, and it's based on how many units you put in there. And that's, it. that's why towns are particularly, towns and spaces where there aren't a lot of units around are really vulnerable to coup de main, surprise attacks. And that's going to be successful. So then what's going to happen is this fellow is going to die. This town is going to die. Three raiders are going to die. It's the garrison, two of them killed a raider each. Um, raiders are generally pretty bad in battle, but um, once if they can assault a, a place and not have to deal with the defenses, they do that coup de main, they're doing rather well. And then they get all the plunder from the town. Actually, I forget which happens first. And... Okay, so first they get three plunder from off map, and here's why it matters. You really want like a lot more people than you normally would need here. 
and we'll just kind of put the plunder near them because my left hand is not working. And then the final guy will get filled with from the town. I'm assuming the last cube just stays in the town. You're supposed to plunder all prosperity. I'm going to look at what happens if you plunder all prosperity and there, there's more prosperity than you can carry. Does, do you just take it and dump it on the ground so the town doesn't have it? Or does it just stay there? It was unclear. I could not figure it out. Um, I think, uh, so Pegasus is going to pass here. She, there's a nice little event on this next card. And even if um, Junior doesn't let her do it, the threat of her being able to do it will probably make him do just a standard command and no um, special action. Let's see, replace all non, all red for one nation with any one off map. Duke's piece. Yeah, see, and the event there is not useful to him. See, this would let her um, replace all the cavalry in one fort with a settlement and war bands, respectively. Now, this is a really nice spot for that for her. Um, just like hair bears, Saxons are good in fens, her Scotty are good in hills. Um, uh, Junior probably isn't going to let her do that, though. He either has to get those pieces out of there, perhaps use them in an in intercept command, and do a special activity, or else just do the command so that she um, was shut out from doing that event. I think he'll probably just do the straight command. Yeah, I don't think there's anything completely interesting to him on the on the feet side of things. So we'll go ahead and do a command only. She's still gained by doing that because you know, if he did do a feat it would probably be to his benefit. So he's going to try to do some intercepting here. Um, intercepting is a way by which if, if you have control, which unfortunately Britain doesn't have control here. Control is done a little different in this game. You have to have a fort down to have control, and raiders don't count for control. So this this one's completely uncontrolled. Put that control down. Notice the total prosperity went down 10 from, from Hare Bear's maneuver. But he can still get rid of these guys and get some prosperity up. Or uh, uh, not prosperity, um, some prestige up. He can return some prosperity to the point to the space. So decide where he wants to take his units from and go ahead and do that. Look at how low those Britain resources are. We're still pretty early in the, the epoch here. Um, so before any battling happens, we have to see if it even happens. These, these folks here are gonna have a chance to evade these Saxon raiders and they need to have, they need to get a four or better on a D6. So we'll do the northerly ones first. And they have evaded now these folks, they did not evade. So they're essential. So first, what's going to happen is this guy is going to ride in and destroy two of them, um, and then it's just going to be. I think the militia are going to take it. Well, actually, we could do two militia, and he takes half of one but that's not going to be enough. The Raiders only do half in field battles. So, um, let's see, Junior could decide to keep one of these, but he's going to put it back in there instead, and this is just going to go away. It gets lost in, in the scuffle. Dancy Bear has had fairly poor luck so far in terms of turn order. Um, she's just had to do limited commands and Junior's been spending all her money. Uh, but we're going to talk about Hair Bear right now. Hair Bear's got a nice opportunity to get a foothold down here. He could do it here where they would, he would have the terrain advantage, but there's all those pieces arrayed against him. So how this is going to work is he's going to do a command plus feet and he's going to mark that place. And this place, I looked up the pronunciations, but then promptly forgot them. Um, this costs nothing to do this. He gets to just get them out of there, and bring the prosperity home and tell great tales about how they did such a good job evading. 
and got some um, renown from it. Now these folks here, they're gonna get six renown. That's a lot of renown. Just wiped out Dorotrigues here. And then he's also doing his special ac settle activity there. So how that works is we're gonna roll, and, and what is it, is it? It's different for the Scotty and the Saxons. Um, Saxons, four to six, yeah. They have a better chance of placing war bands down on the table. So he's gonna roll six times. One, two, three, four. So three out of four. Three out of five. Just what you would expect. Three. Now he could make one, two of these go away. I believe two of these war bands go away in order to put a settlement down. I think he will. It's kind of a poorly guarded settlement, but he's going to do that. And then he can also pay three renown to place one Saxon band per settlement, plus his Saxon control, one per population. I think he'll go ahead and do that, too. Build it back up. Or is that an or with the settlement? Oh, yeah. No, he had to pay the three renown to put the settlement down in the first place. So he's got a tenuous grip, but a bit of control now. And his scoring marker goes up to two. Okay, Pegasus is finally going to get a turn to go. She's going to do a command plus feet. I think she wants to use her ransom ability, and she's going to do some raiding as well. Now it's going to be cheaper for her to raid, but she's not going to get as many pieces down there. So where is she going to raid? She's going to raid here, 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 and here. And she's going to pay four. One, two, three, four to get 2d4 guys, raiders down in each. So she'll have five, four, four, and five. Five, four, four, five. That's easy to remember. I'll go ahead and place those down, and then we'll do some, um, some ransoming. I wanted to note before we ransom that there's no, no patrols over here. Even though there's some forts along the ocean, Hibernicus, they do not send out patrol boats. So she doesn't get decreased at all in her, um, in her rating there, which is kind of nice. Which is good because she doesn't, she only gets 2d4 worth instead of 3d4, which is what um, Hair Bear gets. Okay, so she has to roll a three or better because her ransom rolls are plus one. Normally it's a 50-50 shot. One, two, three, four. And that's devastating. It takes, the, the Britons are down to three. And what's she at, four? So she goes up to eight. She has the most money in the game. A barbarian. I wanted to say something about this thing right here. Um, this is a great addition to the game. I found in the past whenever um, there's been cards with capabilities, I always have to just take the card out anyway, as well, you know, along with getting the counter. So to just to have these like generic counters that work with the card, that, that works really well. Because it's rare that you play a game so much that you memorize what all the little like short capability things do. So you kind of have to have the reference anyway. So I'm, I'm glad that um, someone real recognized that and they, they made the components match the behavior. All right, a hair bear dilemma. She could take this kind of useless event. She could do a limited command, but she's limited in resources. Or she could pass and hope for a future opportunity. I think that sounds like the best idea for her. It's kind of demoralizing to have to do that. But then she can pass, get three resources for doing so. Whoops, sorry. And then go up to six. And then I think probably Junior might pass as well. Junior to remove all Federati pieces. See what see what they, remove all militia and all. Yeah, that event's not that useful either. 
but then he would get the second action. Now, what would be the benefit of him doing a limited command right now? Probably not much. So I think he's going to pass, get the money as well for the Britons, back up to the wealthiest people in the world. Hair Bear is gambling big on a pair of big raids, um, both in Dumnonii and Dobuni. I'm, I'm thinking that's right, uh, pronunciation-wise. These are really, like, weird places for the Saxons to be raiding, because it's not their favored terrain. But since he has this uh, stronghold here, he figures he can avoid the forts and their boats. So Dumnonii, he's doing a deep raid here because he wants to do a surprise attack. I guess it's not a deep raid, it's just a surprise attack. Four, seven, ten. That's good, and that's all ten. He's not getting any any subtracted from that. And then Dobuni. Two, three, not so good. This one was more just to be annoying anyway. Doom no nii, that's the one he's like really counting on being great. Okay, seven. Time for a coup de main. And that was successful, I believe, yep. And so we're gonna have the same thing as before. Three units of his die, the town, and this dies. Now he's not gonna get anything else from the town because it's all gone. But he does get the three prosperity from off map, and he's got some units to return in hopes of getting more war bands on a future turn. Hopefully they remain there. Normally these would be completely safe right now, but since Junior has the seafaring ability, he can pop in there still. Oh no, he can't because it, there's no British control. So I guess they're pretty safe. These less so safe. While Dancing Bear think thinks about what to do with her limited command. Let's talk about victory, just so we, you all know what these folks are striving for a little more specifically. So Pegasus, she needs to have four settlements on the map, and she needs to have 45 renown. So she's got a long way to go. She's got to get this little green guy all the way over there. That's that's a, that's a distance, isn't it? Um, Hair Bear, on the other hand, he only need, he could do four settlements and just have, what, 30 renown right there. That's not as far, but I guess that's maybe harder for him to get. He also has another path to success, and that is to have control of 10 worth, and he's two-fifths of the, or two-tenths of the way there, one-fifth of the way there right now. Um, if we look at Junior, now, again, his, his goal can change throughout the game, but right now, he has to get this thing above this marker. And it's always this thing above this marker, wherever it is, and that marker can move. And this can change to say different things. You can flip it over. Um, right now, he's lower than that. And he needs to have Roman rule. Or not Roman rule. He needs to have um, military dominance within the government. Now, um, Dancing Bear, she is above her victory marker, but she needs this to be at civilian dominance, and it is not. So no one is there yet. Um, it's possible she could shift that before the Epoch card comes up, but control is, seems to be slipping fast, so we'll see. Junior's intercepting uh, Pegasus. Pegasus is going to try to evade in two spaces, and he's also intercepting um, this one, Hair Bear, and Hair Bear is going to try to evade. His chances aren't very good, though. Uh, Pegasus, she needs a four or higher. She failed. She failed. Let's see how Hair Bear does. He needs to get a six, because they are not in favored terrain. Nope, everyone failed. So it's going to be a junior-led bloodbath. After Junior put his first Federati on the map, these are Saxons that are working for him. Essentially, they can switch sides though. They can switch to the Siwi Tate side. They can switch uh, to Hair Bear's side. Hair Bear actually has a pivotal event that just makes them join his side, I think. Uh, but, you know, then he has to play his pivotal event, right? And he probably wants to wait for there to be more Federati out there. Um, Pegasus, she raided here again. She had a limited command. She decided to beef up the number of people there in hopes to get some war bands down in the future. Now we're going to go to sea trading. Finally. Finally, Dancing Bear 
gets to act first. It's been really hard on her to have to wait. So C trading, this event is actually pretty nice for her to add 10 to the wealth. The difference between wealth and prestige is how you determine dominance during the epoch phase. There are certain event cards that also change it, but that's kind of a, the main way you're going to do it. Um, or she could go on the next card. Eh. I think she might take the wealth. I think she wants that wealth. She's going to take the event. And that's going to give Hair Bear a um, free command plus feet without having to worry about any consequences. And it's a good thing Dancing Bear didn't pass in favor of going first on this card. That's some, oftentimes that's a good move, I think, because you get to shut peop, other people out of the choices. You know, if you're going to have, you know, she just had Hair Bear that she was going to affect. Uh, anyway, um, we have an Epoch card. That circumvents this card, goes in front of it. So I'll go through the Epoch and kind of let you know where things are sitting. Dan, uh, Hair Bear got a lot of bad rolls on his turn to get some more Warbands down, but he did get three. So that's pretty good. I guess a little under half. He had seven rolls to make. And he's got some money now. Some renown, I mean. Okay, so far what have we done? We've paid off these folks. That is in the Anona phase here. Um, then the Britons transferred their one wealth to, or their one resources to wealth. Wealth is something that just they get to use. And they can use it for special things that you can't use for resources. Uh, we had no shifts here. Um, but we are going to have a shift there because of this event here. So I don't see why Dancing Bear doesn't want this at Roman rule. And then she gets to put out two of these militia, which are great. Um, I'll have her do that later. Anything else happen? I think that's about it. She used to sh Oh, yeah. This is why I went on camera so you could see me roll dice. So uh, Junior paid four of his own money from his own personal funds to make it less likely that he has to remove cavalry from the board. So I'm going to roll this three times, and any numbers that are above four, he has to remove that many. So if it's six, if I roll a six, he has to roll, remove two. Nothing. He has to remove nothing. Nothing. He picked the right number with four. It's because he's a systems analyst. So sadly for Pegasus, all of her raiders up there had to go home before they got to convert into warbands. Um, here's a look at the rest of the map as things are going on. We kind of have... A lot has kind of returned back to normal. Not quite as good as it was. Not really any barbarian presence. Things have been peaceful, except for in the south. We're at Durotrigis. Durotrigis? Or is it Durotrigis? I don't know. I'll work on that. And we'll see you next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. English Leg, we're playing Pendragon. We're going to be in our second epoch.